please stand by. Ladies and gentlemen, the name of this show is The Spiritual Side of Cannabis, and the next voice you shall hear will be that of the chaplain of the Lighter Than Air Ministries, Chaplain Dennis Keith Hale. Now it looks like we're all set. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, you've read about him. You have heard all the rumors. So here now direct from the studios of the Lighter Than Air Ministries in Katati, California, stepping to the microphone, may I introduce to you the good chaplain, Chaplain Dennis Keith Hale. Yeah! Hi again, glad of it. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Chaplain Dennis Keith Hale, and I'm here at the Lighter Than Air Ministries in Katati, California. Thank you so much for joining us here on the spiritual side of cannabis. The spiritual side of cannabis what a lovely name for a show. Can you imagine having a switch to turn on spirituality and turn it off? How about every Sunday morning at 11 o'clock? Just as this program comes but once a week, having a spiritual element in your life through the Christian model takes us weekly to a building where we sing familiar songs and are with familiar people. And this system came about as a way to helping people within their own little system, like-minded individuals helping each other. And that's, what, that's wonderful. It makes a wonderful community in a small model. But modern life is very complex and the help that we need personally can't be found just in reading the Bible and observing and remembering the good works of other people, but we have to, it has to be an active participation thing. Well, the Christians have an idea that for you that what you should be doing every week is going to their church and giving them money, which I think is an interesting concept. It's uh, sort of like extortion. You won't go to heaven if you don't give us money. I actually know people who have been deprived of services of their church because they weren't in good standing financially with it. Can you imagine that? It's like a debtor's prison for your spirit. Nothing like that should happen. And whenever someone reports that to me, I have people who stop me as I'm clerically dressed and tell me how dissatisfied they are because of all the bad things that religion has done to them. And, and it keeps me on my toes. I feel like often I'm an apologist for Christianity, even though I no longer support the foundations of Christianity. I can only tell you that how it turned out from where Christianity was supposed to be to where it ended up. These are its waning days as the churches are almost empty because the message of fear and hate is overcome by science and self-help books. It's true, more people buy self-help books and more people buy ways of remedying their own sadness without acting proactive with a substance to do it. Now, drink isn't going to help you. If you're going to go out and drink and get drunk, you're not going to achieve anything. You're going to be sad. You're going to be depressed because alcohol is a depressant. So get that right out of your mind. Think about what can actively help you expand your mind. What can happen to me that I can do good to myself that'll make me happy. And I want you to think about marijuana. I want marijuana to be this trigger for happiness in your life. We know it works because even people have been smoking marijuana for years. When they use it in the form of a trigger, a way to start the happiness flowing, it works for them. It makes them remember how good it can be. And if you'd like to be reminded how good it could be, Think about doing this. Think about joining in on a seven-minute miracle, as we call it. You don't need to go out and buy any more self-help books. You need to go out and get yourself $20 worth of marijuana and give it a try. Give it a try and see if it works for you. We know so many people that have gone from the depths of despair 
to a working relationship with life that they can accept. The self-help books are many, but the real aid is few and far between. We want you to think about things beyond yourself, where you can introduce elements into your life that could be a positive, could be a way forward for you in something that you've never imagined, perhaps. But by using marijuana as a trigger for happiness, if you use marijuana in such a way as to not bring a lot about enlightenment, I doubt that will happen. But expansion on what you have, the expansion of your own mind. I was talking to some friends the other day who were kind of hippies like us, like me, when they were younger. And now, after years of having copped out, as we used to call it, having cut their hair and gone to work for the establishment, and I mean the establishment now, I'm talking about chemical companies and such, they realized that some of the happiest times of their life when, were, when they were young, of course, before they had so much responsibility, and that's part of it, but now, returning to that place once again, instead of a second childhood, have a second acknowledgement of the things which were important to you when you are a young person. That's why listening to music can be so important. I'm talking about the soundtrack of your life. If you can conjure up the soundtrack of your life to have it run concurrently with the marijuana that's running now, the type of very, very potent marijuana, you're going to be able to return to the same feelings, the same ideas, and the same considerations you had as a younger person. And now you have a chance to relive that. And in reliving it, you also get a chance to relitigate it in a way as how you're going to deal with these feelings and your responsibilities and such. We, of course, we're not in any way counseling you to not take care of your responsibilities. That'll get your electricity turned off in many ways. But instead, we want you to expand and return to a place you once were and start walking again and see where it'll take you. I know a lot of the people who support this ministry are people who feel guilty about their past and how they copped out, how they were ended up working for the man and doing things which they never thought they would possibly do. I know myself, to support this ministry over the years, I've had to bite the bullet and go out and do jobs which I was not happy about or proud of, but instead were a way to make this ministry continue on. Now as the final days are waning in a way, I want to thank each and every one of you who has been helpful. To all those of you who felt guilt <laughs> from copping out, I guess, thank you for remembering back and recognizing that there is a moment and you can have it. Don't go, go, don't go out and buy another self-help book, really. It won't do you any good. Get inside yourself. Get inside your mind. Use this little tool that nature has given us. It'll help you. If you need help reintroducing yourself or if you know somebody who's going to start mar smoking marijuana for the very first time, I hope you'll turn them on to our ministry and our 7-Minute Miracle. It's a way of containerizing and making something wonderful. Till then, I end our broadcast as I do each week. I hope that as you go through life, when you need it the most, you find mercy. And when it's your time to go, I hope that you go with grace. Thank you for joining us for another show. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the end of this week's Moment in Time with the Lighter Than Air Ministries, the spiritual side of cannabis. Join us next week. Till then, we say good night. <laughs>